Hi there, I'm Ed China, and what car has asked me to talk to you about vans? Whether I'm building a motorized sofa or electrifying an ice cream van, I've always needed a van to help me move things about, which is why I'm here to guide you through the world of commercial vehicles, and to tell you which I think are the good ones and which are the rotten eggs. But before I do that, do me a small favor and please click the subscribe button below so you don't miss any more of my reviews. Now, the chances are that you're already familiar with the Volkswagen Transporter. It's one of the most heavily modified vans of all time, with various companies turning it into a camper van or a luxury people carrier or any other manner of capacious vehicle. Some even add sporty elements such as light bars and spoilers onto it. But with this Sportline version, Volkswagen has done that job for you. The result is just about the most aggressive head-turning van you can actually get from the Volkswagen van range. And like other Sportline models before it, you get the spoilers, you get the side bars, you get special paint, and you get the leather bits to make it stand out from the crowd. But the upgrades on this version aren't purely cosmetic though. It also comes with IBAC coilover suspension, which offers a sportier, firmer ride and lowers the height by 30 millimeters. This is the combi version of the Transporter 2, which means it's got rear seats and of course, some pretty dark tinted glass to make it even more menacing. The question is though, despite all of these upgrades, is this latest Volkswagen Transporter Sportline worthy of a place on your new van shortlist? That's what we'll be finding out in this review. Sporty looking vans often fail to live up to their looks, with all those spoilers and diffusers writing checks the engine can't cash, but the Transporter Sportline does at least have the most powerful of all the Transporter engine options under the bonnet. It's a 2.0-litre diesel engine which produces 201 brake horsepower and is paired up with a 7-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox as standard. All that power combined with super-fast gear changes means this transporter can hit 62 miles an hour in 8.9 seconds, which is quite respectable by van standards. Then there's the way it drives, which has always been one of the key strengths of the transporter T6.1. The steering is precise through corners and offers excellent straight line stability when you're on the motorway. And like its bigger relative, the Volkswagen Crafter, it manages to disguise its size admirably by keeping body lean under control. The ride in the standard van is perfectly acceptable, whether you have a light or heavy load, but it is firmer than rivals. The new IBAC springs smooth out the ride, while a 30mm reduction in ride height improves the feeling of being stuck to the road even more. This is certainly one of the sportiest vans I'm going to drive this year, but it's also one of the most advanced, and is crammed with safety systems from the standard Transporter 6.1. There's automatic emergency braking to apply the brakes if a car, a cyclist or pedestrian gets in front of you, along with lane keeping assistance to keep you in between the lines on a motorway or dual carriageway. At the back, there's rear cross traffic alert, which warns you of oncoming traffic when reversing out of spaces, and crosswind assist, which automatically applies the brakes when strong winds are detected that could blow you out of your lane. Vans have traditionally been functional but pretty bland to sit in, but that's definitely not the case here. The regular transporter is both comfortable and well equipped, and this Sportline Black Edition version takes that to a whole new level, with loads of leather and suede trim, contrasting stitching and glossy bits of plastic to liven up the interior. There's even a new digital instrument cluster, which does a great job of putting the most useful information right in front of you. There's also a central infotainment touchscreen, which offers all the usual features you'd expect, including a DAB radio, sat-nav, or smartphone mirroring. And in its largest form, it measures up to 9.2 inches. Because this version of the Transporter is actually a combi van, you get two rows of seats. And that still leaves you plenty of space around the back. And in fact, you have a hatched tailgate rather than the conventional double barn doors. But look at that space, it's wonderful. Short wheelbase vans have 1.6 meters of length with up to 4.3 meters cubed of load volume, while long wheelbase vans have just less than 2 meters of length in cargo area and a volume of 5 meters cubed. There's 1.2 meters in width and 1.4 meters in height available too. Payload for the short wheelbase van is just over 1 tonne at 1039 kilograms, while the longer versions can take up to 967 kilograms. 
There's no doubting that this Transporter Sportline is a special van that's going to really get you noticed. And because a van is, for most people, their own mobile business card, that's definitely no bad thing. People are going to remember you and your van. Yes, the Transporter Sportline is an expensive choice, but it's certainly a stylish one. Add to that that it's practical, good to drive and comfortable to spend time in, and I'm giving it the Ed Factor seal of approval. What car agrees too, because it's awarded the regular Transporter T6.1 four stars on its road test. Want to see more van reviews from me? Then subscribe to the What Car YouTube channel. You'll see each of my new reviews as soon as they're released. And in between, you'll also get to watch other reviews by the lovely people at What Car. And if you can't wait for your next van fix, then head to whatcar.com and click on the van section to see all of our latest van news, advice, and reviews. Come on.